Chapter 10 It took 15 minutes to convince the doctor that Rash didn't know what the thing on Shaver's neck was, or how it got there. It took another 15 minutes to finish the paperwork, and 40 more to get home. Even though the sun wasn't yet showing more than a faint glow in the east, the morning traffic had begun. Rash didn't bother cursing as he drove, or tried to make time. It wasn't as if he was in any hurry. He needed sleep, but he knew that he wasn't going to get any right away. Not while the image of that gadget on Schaefer's neck was stuck in his mind. Not while he kept imagining those claws the doctor had described. The drive gave Rash time to think, but he didn't think of anything useful. He just kept seeing that ring of blood, or Schaefer's body falling, or the dangling mutilated corpses at the police range. He left Schaefer's car at the curb and hauled himself wearily into his darkened house. Sherry and the lads were still asleep, Rash figured. At least Sherry hadn't tried to wait up for him. She wasn't lying on the living room couch with the television still on. For a moment, he was tempted to take a quick look upstairs, make sure they were all right, but that was crazy. He'd just risk waking them up. They were safe here, as much as anyone was safe anywhere in New York. He trudged into the kitchen, where he hung his holstered gun on a door handle, and while he found a bottle of bourbon. He was acting on the theory that a good stiff shot of booze might help him sleep. Bourbon. General Phillips had been drinking bourbon. Just who the hell was Phillips anyway? Who did he work for? He knew what was going on here, or at least part of it. What was his connection with the killers? Schaefer's brother, Dutch, was connected to it somehow. And so was Schaefer. It couldn't just be a coincidence. The killers had taken out a bunch of Schaefer's enemies, then a bunch of Schaefer's allies, they hadn't touched anyone in New York that Schaefer didn't care about, one way or another. And they'd been waiting for him at that tenement, or someone had. They must have guessed Schaefer would go back there after the massacre on 20th Street. What had happened to Schaefer up there? Rash had never seen him take a beating like that, with his nose and jaw both smashed before he went out through the hole in the wall. And that thing stuck on his neck. Did Phillips know what that was? What was it Phillips had said? They like the heat. They want the sport. Sport. Makes it sound like the America's Cup or something, Rash muttered. Did you say something, hun? Sherry asked him from the doorway. Rash started and almost spilled the whiskey. I heard you come in, Sherry said. She was wearing her old pink terry cloth bathrobe. Sorry, Rash said. I didn't mean to wake you. I'd be getting up in 15 minutes anyway. So, did you say something? No, no, Rash said. It's nothing. He gulped bourbon and glanced at the clock and saw that Sherry was right about the time. Isn't it kind of early to be drinking like that? She asked. No, Rash said. It's late. <laughs> Very late. He swallowed the rest of the whiskey. Do you want some breakfast? Shari asked, reaching for a cupboard door. Rash shook his head. I'll be going to bed in a few minutes. You got the day off? I'm taking the day off. I've been up all night. He looked at the empty glass and the half full bottle, then put the cap back on the bottle and the glass in the sink. There was someone or something out there in the city. Something that had thrown Schaefer off the fifth floor, something that had butchered a dozen armed men, and according to Phillips, it had done it for sport, for fun. Whatever it was, he didn't want to be drunk into a stupor if he ever had to face it, and it could show up at any time. Did you eat anything? Shari asked. Yeah, Rash lied. He sat and watched as his wife got her own breakfast cornflakes and milk. She didn't bother cooking if he wasn't going to eat. Sometimes he wished she didn't care so much for him. If he ever did get himself killed, she'd suffer for it. And he hated thinking of that even more than he hated thinking of his own death. He knew he should get some sleep, but he wasn't ready yet. He wasn't sure why not. He sat there by the table as if waiting for something, but he didn't know what. 
he was sitting there when someone began pounding at the front door. Rash was on his feet in an instant, grabbing his gun and shouting, Shari, get upstairs with the kids, now! Shari threw him a terrified glance, then scampered for the stairs. Pistol in hand, Rash crept down the front hall. Whoever it was was still knocking, but just knocking. No one had broken in the glass panes in the door. No one had kicked at the door. No one had picked or smashed the lock. No one had come in through the windows. That was promising, but Rash still kept his gun ready. All right, all right, I'm coming, he called as his hand closed on the knob. He could see the outline of two men through the white curtain that covered the glass. Carefully, he nudged the fabric aside with the barrel of the revolver and peered out at the faces. One was out of his line of sight, but the other he recognised. Schaefer. His face was half covered with bandages, but there was no question. It was Schaefer. For a moment, Rash's weary mind went blank. What the hell was Schaefer doing there? The pounding continued, and eventually that penetrated Rash's own confusion. He opened the door, pistol still in his hand. About time, Mac, the stranger said. He was a young black man of undistinguished size, and he was struggling to keep Schaefer upright with one arm while he knocked with the other. Schaefer was barefoot, still wearing his green hospital gown. He coughed. <laughs> hey, Rash. He said, pay this creep, will you? <clears throat> Rash looked past them both at the city cab waiting at the curb. Schaefer had gotten out of hospital and found a cab. He didn't have any money, didn't have his goddamn clothes, but he'd gotten a cab. Let's get him on the couch, Rash said to the stranger, ignoring Schaefer. Together, Rash and the cab driver got Schaefer onto the sofa in the living room, his head propped up on a throw pillow. Shari's crocheted Afghan thrown across his bare legs. A twenty from the housekeeping money covered his fare and a tip. Rash didn't want to keep the cabbie around long enough to worry about change. As he showed the driver out, Rash saw Shari at the top of the stairs and signalled to her that everything was okay. She crept down the steps and saw their guest. She relaxed slightly upon recognising him, but his condition was enough to keep her nervous. Um, I'll get you some tea, she said. Rash pulled a chair up beside the couch and sat, looking at his partner. Schaefer was still in bad shape. That had been obvious at the door. He was bandaged half a dozen places and couldn't speak without coughing. Rash guessed that that came from the pressure on his lungs from a broken rib. He was conscious, though. How did you get out of hospital? Rash asked. The doctor said, screw the doctor, Schaefer interrupted. Then he went into a brief fit of coughing. Rash waited for it to pass. So what are you doing here? He demanded. Schaefer held up a bandaged hand. I'm going to need help for a few days, he said. Help? Rash asked. Help doing what? Schaefer coughed. I need a place to stay where I can do some thinking, get some things done. Can't do shit in that goddamn hospital. Besides... The feds can watch me every goddamn minute there. But Shafe, you're all busted up. That's why I didn't fucking go home, Rash, Schaefer said, lifting his head. I can't manage by myself, yet. Come on, give me a break. Right, you can't go home like this, Rash agreed uncertainly. So can I stay, or not? You're welcome to stay, Shafe. But what is it you want to do that you can't do in the hospital? I mean, you're in no shape to... I'm gonna find the ugly son of a bitch that did this, Schaefer interrupted, before being overtaken by more coughing. Again, Rash waited for the coughing to stop. I'm going to find him, Schaefer said, and I'm gonna kick his ugly ass from here to Jersey. Shari appeared in the kitchen doorway, holding a cup. I... I made you some tea, Schaefer. I... Schaefer, already sitting up to ease the coughing, turned slightly and accepted the cup. Thanks, Shari, he said. A voice spoke from the hallway. Wow, just look at his neck, the boy said. It's all bloody. Cool, another voice answered. Rash looked up and saw his two sons standing in the doorway, 
staring at Schaefer. They were right. The thing on Schaefer's neck was oozing fresh blood again. The coughing had probably done it. Honey, please, Rash said. Could you get the boys out of here? Sherry obeyed, dragging the pair of them to the kitchen for breakfast. When they were gone, Rash asked, What about that thing on your neck? We've got to get it off before it kills you. I don't think it's there to kill me, Schaefer said. At least not yet. So what do you think? I think I've been tagged, like some kind of baby seal, Schaefer said. Guess he wants to keep tabs on me. He grimaced, coughed, then added wryly, I guess the bastard likes me. <laughs>